everybody hope you're all doing good today just um here at the gym getting ready to go do a workout um and before i can really go in and join my workout i wanted to do this video and sort of get something off my chest uh, that came about this afternoon and i think a lot of y'all that have followed me you know my position on uh, technology electronic technology particular and how it's uh gotten out of hand price wise and how it's basically uh, created an unlevel playing field. It has been and it's can, can, continuing to do so even at a more rapid pace. <clears throat> One of the things I want to talk about today is I just got done reading a bunch of the stuff about the, the northern swing of tournaments up in St. Lawrence River, Lake Erie, that type of stuff, the guys that have been up there fishing, and about all these guys that are doing good, you know, with all the electronics. They've got, you know, they, they've got all the you know the 360 they've got the live scopes they've got the pan optics and now they're using these aqua view cameras that you can actually look down there and see the bass in and i just want to say that this is getting absolutely ridiculous they like i said it has gotten to the point where a lot of these anglers out there that that go up and when it's set up for this offshore deep water fish and particularly in clear water a lot of these anglers out there, they've got $20,000 plus dollars worth of electronics on their boat. Um, and now to the point where they can drop a dang camera down and see bass swimming down there. Is that what we want? Is that really what we want in the sport? Is that is that what we want bass fishing to turn into? To where you just drop a camera down, you can see what's down there. And no mystery, there's no, uh, there's no magic behind it. You just drop a dang camera down there and see the fish. To me, that, that is the biggest insult. It's the biggest outrage to what's going on in our sport that, that I can even think of. And another thing that, you know, this is gonna be a little bit of a gripe session because I'm really irritated by it, is you take somebody like myself or some other anglers that, that like to, the, to basically, you know, fish the, you know, the more primitive old school ways. Tell me that, okay, justify this. Why is it legal for somebody to go out and, get $25,000 of electronics on their boat just because they can afford to do it. Yet somebody else like myself that wants to, say I get back in the back of a creek and it's sealed it in, it's super shallow. I want to get out and push my boat over a mud flat to get back into that creek. It's illegal for me to do that. It's illegal for me if I want to make a super long run in tournaments to carry a safety approved gas cans in my boat to make that extra long run. It's illegal for me if I want to plant a brush pile or if I want to you know, put some habitat in the lake, even if it's legally through the state regulations, it's illegal for me in tournament to drag off a dead log into the water, plant it to try to, to increase my fish habitats. All of which cost zero money for anglers to do. Yet it's legal for these guys to go these, buy these underwater cameras, to buy these panoptics units, live scope, whatever like that, and have twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars worth of electronics on their boat, where another angler in that particular tournament that doesn't have the resources simply cannot afford that type of technology, and it begins to create this unlevel playing field. Unlevel playing field. Somebody needs to explain that to me. Why? Why that is legal, and then some of the more old school stuff like what I'm talking about is not legal in tournaments, and. I think that what what is missing on this is, you know, and here again, I've talked about it a little bit before and I'll, but, and I'll keep reiterating it, is when we get to the point in the sport where you lose the magic and the mystery of fishing, that degrades what the sport gives back to us. Bass fishing, fishing, being out in nature, being in the environment, being in the natural world, there is a healing aspect to that that you can't can't deny. Even people in cities, they flock to parks. You know why they flock to parks? Because nature, even in that controlled environment of a park, nature is a therapeutic um, aspect of our reality that people respond to. And you've got to have that. Once you take that away from it, we just, we, we degrade ourselves as humans and the human experience. And it's the same with bass fishing. Once you get to the point where you take that magic and mystery and the primal energy out of, and the, and the, the, the unknowns out of bass fishing and you drop a dang camera over the side of the boat and you see how many smallmouth bass are swimming down there before you throw a bait in there, you know, you, you have, you have 
you know, it's an insult to the sport of bass fishing. It's an insult to, to what we're doing out here and what, and what we're trying to do. So the point is, it's like, you know, what do you do? You know, what, who is going to stand up and take a stand and say, no more, this has got to stop right here. Because for example, let, let's take golf, for example, what if somebody came up with a putter, they developed this putter where for some way it could tell you the exact velocity and the exact placement to put that putter to sink 100% of your putts. As long as you're on the green, you've got this high-tech putter that's, you know, whatever, however it works, but basically you can swing it at a controlled rate on an exact spot and you sink any putt that you, that you have. Is, is that what we want? I mean, is that, is that, because basically that's what's happening right now in bass fishing, you know, with the technology advancements in electronics. And I've heard so many guys talk about it, you know, just this week about, oh, if I, if I didn't have my pan optics or my live scope or my 360 or my aqua view, I wouldn't have caught these fish. What about the times, let me t t tell you one term we had at the St. Lawrence back in the day, Rick Clun one, this has been back in the early 90s, you know, this was back before GPS, that all he had was flashers on his unit. He ran his uh, nitro out there in Lake Ontario, you know, 50 miles away from the tournament takeoff, got on a big flat, ripped a big spinnerbait across the flat, won the tournament with 45 pounds. You know, that, and you know, the, the, the magic and the mystery of that tournament and just the energy behind it, I'll, I'll never forget it as far as you know, Rick talking about fighting the waves and, you know, and the, the bait selection and everything that goes with it. There wasn't any of this, yeah, I ran out to Lake Ontario and I saw this giant school of smallmouth on my electronics and then I dropped my uh, AquaView camera down there to make sure they weren't drum and they were smallmouth bass and then I just dropped my bait down there and caught them. I, to me, that is just like, I, I, I just can't tell you how, how backwards that is for the direction that we, we need to be headed in in this sport. And like I said, I could go on and on about this, this particular topic, because I, I just think that we've gotten to the point where we just accept it, that this electronic technology that we're dealing with right now is part of the sport. But like I said, you know, where does it end? You know, eventually tournament fishing becomes nothing more than a commercial venture where the technology advances to such a high level, there's no guesswork anymore. You simply have the technology to, to idle around all day long and find the fish and you know you might as well just take a throw net down there and throw it over the top of them because that's what it basically it amounts to. So I'd be curious to hear everybody's comment on this. Um, like I said, it's you know if you just take step back for a second, think of what I'm talking about, you know particularly talk about there's two different aspects of it. First of all, talk about the, 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 the playing field. Talk about how you have one person out there that's like working as hard as they can. They got a family to support. They don't have $25,000 laying around that they can spend on electronics. And they have to go out there and they have to scrimp. And they, their passion and their desire is just as strong as anybody else. But they have to scrimp and save to have the very basic rudimentary tools to, per to, to pursue this sport with. Yet you have somebody else out there that has unlimited financial resources that can have whatever, uh, you know, opportunities and advantages that can money can buy and they're on the same playing field. And at the same time, somebody like myself can't get out of the boat to push my boat over a dang mud flat. And that's illegal because for whatever reason. So I, I know a little bit of a rant here today, you know, everybody, uh, like I said, it's, I, I, send me your comments. I really want to hear what everybody thinks on this because I just got to believe, you know, there's going to be, I feel that most people are probably on my side with this. Obviously there's going to be some sour grapes out there that say, oh, you just, you're just a dinosaur getting left behind. And if you don't keep up with technology, you know, you're just, that's your own fault. That's not my point. I understand technology. It's not understanding and utilizing the technology that is difficult, even for old dudes like myself. It's affording the technology for everybody that is not independently wealthy is the point that I'm talking about. And that is something that you can't, you can't deny. It's not understanding the technology is difficult. It's affording the technology that's difficult. And that is what creates an unlevel playing field. And that is what is degrading our sport big time. Same with boats and motors. Boats and motors are ridiculous. 
for somebody to go out and have to spend a hundred thousand dollars on a bass boat to, to, we've gotten to that point okay. um i you know it's just uh it's just it's just it's just getting ridiculous so anyway just a few thoughts this afternoon um like i said i'm gonna get out there and you know i'm gonna lift some lift some iron here and try to get this frustration out of me a little bit and um, like I said, send me your comments. I'd really, uh, really be glad or really be interested to hear what everybody says on that. So there it is. That's my rant for the day. And thanks for, thanks for tuning in here into it. See y'all later.